There are many apps that incorporate conversational agents or chatbots, but not every app is the same and not every chatbot is the same. So you, if you are looking at utilizing one of these or recommending one for your patient, you need to know what kind you're working with. Is it one that is built off of a specific algorithm decision tree where they ask it a question, it is defined what it's gonna say back versus one that is more open-ended, utilizing generative AI, that is a lot more unpredictable. The evidence right now for the effectiveness of conversational agents isn't a lot. There needs to be more done. There are some apps that have shown that they can provide some CBT in a very prescriptive way using an algorithmic basis. For generative AI, that is still a really heavily active area of research. Some apps will say, you know, we have evidence, but when you go and you look at the actual evidence, it may be, it's not as strong as you'd like to see for something that you're using for treatment of a patient. It's really important when you're thinking about utilizing a chatbot to turn to the APA's app advisor model because the field changes every day. There's something new that comes out. And if you know how to make informed decisions about technology, you can handle what gets thrown at you. I really want to be optimistic about it because I see a lot of benefit of increasing access, providing something for patients who can benefit in times of crisis. But right now, chatbots aren't that robust with handling crisis situations. We need to really advocate and, and communicate with developers that are creating these technologies so we can help guide things that will be helpful for patients. I think our voice is really important.